Dear Brothers, it's about quality, not quantity. So guys, it should be your, your, your conversation, the way you flow your presence is enough for a woman to want to be around you, not how much money you spend. Dear Sisters, it's about knowing your value. My sisters out there, don't be afraid to scare a guy off just because you have standards. Dear brothers, dear sisters, it's time to come together. Hey, what up my people? And welcome to the first edition of DVDS Live for 2021. I'm your host, Mel Muddy, with my special host, the beautiful Nicole. And I'm pretty excited for this year because, you know, DVDS, we're only going to get bigger we're just going to give you a sneak preview of what we have going on. We have another book coming down the pipeline to share some knowledge. Oh. How to become a better version of yourself. We will have new guests on the show like we have today from all walks of life. And we also have a new segment called The Exchange, where you can call in, drop a comment, ask questions towards me, Nicole, or any of our guests. So listen, I'm pretty pumped. How are you feeling today, my sister? Oh, Mel, I am great. To our audience, Happy New Year. We missed you guys over the past two weeks, but we are back, well-rested, and, you know, added those dope features that Mel told you about. So uh, let's get it. Absolutely. Nice. And just to do a quick plug-in, listen, if you're not aware, we even own our own relationship website, which is called dbdsingles.com, to help you find that special someone with, we have amazing people up there, amazing features, Listen, we make sure the profiles are authentic so you don't got to worry about no, no crazy brother up there or crazy <laughs> sister. Um, right. you know, listen, in fact, if you join dbdsingles.com and connect with someone on the site, we will pay for your first date. You know what I'm saying? So that's how serious we are trying to build these healthy yes. relationships, which brings us to our first title of our show for the, for the brand new year. And the title of today's show is How to Love Someone before, excuse me, how to love yourself before you mm. love someone else. What you think of that topic, Nicole? Mm, how to love yourself first before loving someone else. This is so important, not only in relationships, but life. A healthy yeah. existence begins with self-love. So it's perfect. It's perfect. Yes, yes. So before we pivot to our show, I would like to give a special shout out to my brother Mo and his wife Gina. Get well, get well, brother. And for the whole DVDS family for rocking with us, we greatly appreciate that. So with that being said, it's time to bring our first guest into the studio. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> so the worst one coming into the studio today is my sister, Angela Holloway. Hey. Welcome to DVDS Live. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Good afternoon. Happy New Year. Thanks for having me on. Of course. Absolutely. So tell the people a little bit about yourself, where you're from, and why you're on the show today. So I am Angela Holloway. I'm from New Haven, Connecticut. I am the author of the book, Let Me Tell You What I Know, available on Amazon. I am also a certified life coach specializing in feminine arts and career coaching. And I'm just a pretty cool person, lover of all things beautiful and godly. Yes. And listen, her book it is nice. Make sure you get it. Such an excellent read. Yeah. I mean, it's so hot. Let me just drop a bomb. Glad to have you on the show, my sister. Thank and now, you. absolutely. So now it's time to bring in my brother, Lamar. Hey, hey. welcome to the What's brother. What's going on? What's going on, guys? <laughs> What's going on? Thank you for having me. Of course. Absolutely. And uh, just tell the people a little bit about yourself, where you're from, and why you're on the show today. Uh, again, my name is Lamar Wilson. I'm from Queens, New York. Uh, I am a motivational speaker. I'm helping the youth find their truth and getting through junior high school to high school to college and to life, giving them the steps and the tools so they can be successful as much as I have went through those steps to help them be successful. Nice. I'm on the show today because I, I specialize in relationships. I am a relationship coach helping people going from a two to a 10. There it is. Oh, I like that. <laughs> and, and just to let you guys be aware, my brother, Lamar, man, he be dropping knowledge every day on DBDS, man. So I greatly appreciate it, brother, for you to be on the show today. Oh, uh, anytime, anytime. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Well, I mean, today's show will be aimed towards um, self-love because I feel that the key component to have in order uh, to get 
a great relationship is to establish healthy boundaries and also that'll help you to get the relationship you desire. But before we get deep with this topic, listen, we have a DBDS Anonymous section where people post their thoughts, their issues, and they look for some constructive criticism to help them along their journey. So I'll have my sister Nicole read the letter. Take it away, sister. Okay, so our DBDS sister says, my boyfriend has cheated on me in the past on a consistent basis. It was even one time he cheated on me with my best friend, but I forgave him. We just recently got back together and I find him texting someone in the morning, the night after I agreed to have sex with him again. I, anyway, I asked calmly who he was trying to send the text to. He got angry and defensive immediately and, I, and said that I always wanted to start a fight. Obviously the text must have been for me because he kept raising his voice at me. I told him, excuse me, I told him he doesn't really make me happy anymore with the cheating and the lies. And then earlier this night, just ignoring me and not spending time. And all of a sudden he flipped and said, you will never see me or my kids again. I'm taking the dog, I'm changing my number, et cetera. Like oh. I'm the problem. Am I missing something here? Is this borderline abusive? He made it seem like I was crazy for thinking he was up to something, crazy for questioning it. He said he will never allow anyone to make him seem like a liar. To everyone else, he seems so kind, but to me, not so much. He also claims that he can't live like this, as in the past, it's always back and forth, in and out of my place, as I kicked him out previously. He said he's going to leave, like he always does, but somehow it's my fault. He and his kids are in and out of different houses. I feel at this time it's time to put my foot down and remove him from my life and block him. But I feel bad for breaking up with him, especially with the start of 2021 and the fact that he has not have a, have excuse me he has not had a job in over a year and we're both in our mid 30s. I want so much better. Our two sons can't stand that we fight all the time. Before I give up, should we try counseling or should I just remove him from my life? I truly love him. Whew. Um, you know, sister, thank you so much for your letter because, you know, it does take courage to be open. So don't worry. Listen, we have some experienced, knowledgeable people that can help you with your situation. So first, I'm going to come to my sister, Angela. Um, what advice you have for this anonymous sister? How can we help her? All right. So, sister, I hear and I feel your pain in that letter. So virtual air hug if you're listening, because um, there's nothing worse than being in a relationship and it's just not you're not happy. Mm -hmm. But I want to remind you that you have power. Don't you ever forget that you have power. If you're in something and it's not working, remember your power. Without telling you what to do, remember your power. People are their habits. A credit score without telling me how you look or what age you are, it shows me your spending habits. Your resume, again, shows me your work habits. If we were to pull your boyfriend's relationship resume, he has a habit of cheating. Mm -hmm. Would you hire him with that resume? That's where your power lies. As far as saying he doesn't make you happy anymore and he flipped on you, to be honest, he responded to you. I mean, somebody tells me I no longer make them happy. I'm going to say something in response. And so he didn't flip on you. He was responding. This is obviously how you two communicate. I recommend counseling not so much for the relationship, but for the individuals in the relationship. It's always a good idea going on in your head, in your mind, before you try to fix what's going on with the two of you. So I wish you well, sister, and I feel your pain, but I pray that your frown turns to a smile. Mm. Oh, Beautiful. Yeah, very well said. Um, the thing is, some people, when they get into these long-lasting relationships, they put the quantity over the quality of the relationship. Mm -hmm. I'm coming to my brother Lamar. What advice you have for our sister? How can we help him? Uh, first, let me just say I'm sorry that you even have to deal with this in, you know, 2021, that you're still dealing with this. But um, I do agree with maybe counseling for yourself would be one thing because it might be habits that you have that you need to fix. And I'm not saying that's the cause of it, but I want you to understand something. Once someone else enters the relationship, the relationship is broken. It's done. The trust is gone. There's always going to be that in the back of your mind. You're living something that you know that one day may change and it will never change. It will come back up. And for him to get offensive, 
for him to even step out of the relationship to your best friend, to, to other people, that's showing the amount of respect that he has, not just for you, but for the relationship itself. Mm. And, 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 and like Angela said, like you have the power. Like you have to, you have to pull that stuff out of you and say enough is enough. Mm. I deserve better. Like, yes, we have kids together and I will always respect you for that. And I will always be your partner and, and we will do this together. But I cannot allow you to treat me like this. Like I deserve better. This, I don't deserve this. Mm. Like I love you, I do. And I know it's hard to walk away because nobody wants a broken home. But what would happen when the kids go off to college or go off and live their own life? Mm. And y'all, y'all still dealing with the same mess. You're still dealing with mm. the same mess. How can y'all, how can y'all work together? So you have to take, you have to really take some time to yourself. Work on yourself. You have to work on yourself. You have flaws. You do. I know it's hard to accept. We all have flaws. But you have to ask yourself, is this really what I want? And if it's not, let it go. You can still be have him in your life, but it has to be on a different platform just for the kids. And once you allow that to happen, I promise you, maybe he will see that I had something great. Not good, great in my life. But it starts with you. Mm. And once you do that, I promise you, your life is going to take off. I promise you. God got you. But it starts with you. Mm. Man, very well said. You can't um, expect help if you can't help yourself. Very well said. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm coming to my sister, Nicole. What what advice you have for our system? Well, first, I want to thank you, DBDS sister, for reaching out. You've already taken a step in the right direction by acknowledging that help is needed. Um, so why does your boyfriend get so angry when you catch him in his lies? In a logical and rational world, he would have little to no right to be upset, right? But relationships aren't always guided by logic and reason. They're sometimes guided by our feelings and emotion. When faced with confrontation or embarrassment, our natural defense ne mechanism is to protect ourselves from attack, so to speak. And as much as we don't like to hear it, defense mechanisms are psychological strategies brought into play by the unconscious mind. So it's a normal impulsive reaction. However, what isn't normal is the threats, the absence of communication preceding these fights to clear up any issues or wrongdoings, or even an apology. Instead, he shifts the blame to you, refusing to acknowledge your feelings or insecurities. And because there's been infidelity in the past, you both should be working towards rebuilding a relationship or rebuilding the trust that was lost. No matter how much you wanna fix things and no matter how much you love him, counseling is not gonna be successful if you both aren't committed to the process. It's gonna take you both. Ooh. Very well said. And you know what? I always state like the best form of apology is change behavior, right? right? So, you know, my anonymous sister, you have to like everybody in the panel hit it right on the nail, but you have to take a step back and bring some rationality to your situation. Um, you know, I just feel like overstepping boundaries within a relationship is not healthy. And I know you mentioned about the kids, but it's such a bad example for your kids to see this sort of behavior because they may normalize it when they get older. And sadly, so many people who choose to remain in toxic relationships, I feel like are afraid of change or stepping out of their, their comfort zone because most people believe that the unknown will be much more painful than what they're already experiencing. And um, it's sort of like that old proverb, which says, better the devil you know, instead of someone you don't know, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, and it sounds like this mindset you have will keep you from taking, you know, um, the necessary actions that could bring change to your life, especially for your young ones. Because sometimes we need to disconnect from that poisonous entity, self-reflect and work on ourselves to become a better version, which converts over to loving yourself. So you won't tolerate this sort of behavior. Um, I mean, the constant arguing is a red flag that shows that you have poor communication and no respect for each other, just like my brother Lamar stated. And, um, you know, I'm all for mothers and fathers to remain together for, for the sake of the kids. However, one is demonstrating toxic behavior on a consistent basis, which 
lowers the standards and creates a, a poor example of a relationship or a dysfunctional household, then listen, it's time to reevaluate the relationship and get some counseling, like Angela stated, for yourself. Um, because the reality is this sort of behavior can precondition your young ones, as I stated subconsciously, that this is normal behavior in a relationship and that will affect their dating life. Okay. So again, with that segment alone, I'm going to just talk about it. We all came up the gate. That's just a warm up. So again, thank you for your letter. And I hope our advice guides you in the right direction. So with that being said, we're going to pivot to our show, which is titled How to Love Yourself Before You Love Someone Else. Mm. And the first subtopic that we're going to talk about here is, and this is a good one that I think is very important to know about, is self-care. Mm. Man, self-care. You got to take care of yourself if you want the relationship you desire. So let me just size it up right quick. So pretty much when you take care of yourself, it will only boost your self-esteem. A part of self-care is doing nice things for yourself, such as, I'll say, developing your goals, um, your interests, your hobbies. And by filling your love tank will give you the fortitude to not expect anything else or less from a potential partner. So I'm coming to my sister, Angela. Uh, what are your thoughts on this particular topic? So self-care is definitely the trending buzzword, but it is so important. The relationship with ourselves is the only one we take with us from the to, from the cradle to the grave. We are always with ourselves, regardless of who comes in and out of our lives. So how we love ourselves and take care of ourselves is so important. There's even the theory that says we teach people how to do this. So people are basically getting the print and the playbook from us. Knowing that, that should make your self-care a number one priority because you are displaying to the world how you want to be treated, how you want to be spoken to, and how you want to be taken care of. So it's important. Mm -hmm. I know all your listeners are a various age group, but, you know, therapy can help. You know, you don't have to carry childhood trauma for the rest of your life. Therapy, counseling, as we just talked about, getting secure in your faith, whatever that may be. You know, if you want to leave your family's faith and find your own path, it's always good to do that perhaps before you get into a relationship with someone. Your own level of cleanliness, your routines, these things you can always practice. And not when I say practice, I mean really get it solidified before you get into a relationship. Learning boundaries, this especially with family and friends. You don't want to have to like push your family and friends out of your relationship. They should already know beforehand, even as a single person. The limits are what healthy boundaries are so these are the things you can take care of it's really taking care of yourself it's only going to enhance your relationship mm. Mm. Nice. that's very important my people's nuggets and, you know just like jay-z uh you know that blueprint album you know you got to set that blueprint for other people to, to follow suit you know what i'm saying so i'm coming to my brother lamar um, <laughs> what are your thoughts on this topic right here Self-care is important. We need to really focus that. That should be the first, that should be the foundation. Uh, your Any type of relationship that you have, your, found, your self-care is the most important thing. If you have self-care, and I mean as far as your health goes, because if you're, if you're out there eating and you're just like, I don't care. If you're out there doing things that, you know, that's harming your body, you know, that, that puts stress on you, depression. So, like, if you know that there's some areas in your life that you need to fix, like, work on that. And I'm not saying that you can't have a relationship, but you need to work on you first. But you also have to create these core values that you have in your life. Like, these core values, the things that you will allow and the things you won't allow. If you're not a smoker and you don't like being around people that smoke, don't date someone that smokes. Mm -hmm. If you know that you don't like argument, you're not, hey, I'm not confrontational. I'm, okay, get, that's great. So don't be, a, if you see that this person, that's their, their MO, then listen, I have to, I, I can't be around you. That's just not mine. And you have to find your, like Mel said, you have to find your love language. So if you have to do a self self-assessment test, for yourself to find yourself first and like what what do I like and what I don't like? Know you first. 
because we were just raised as on the go. And you just develop these habits of what you like, what you don't like. Oh, I like vegetables or I don't like vegetables. Okay, great. But internally, you have to self-assess. And when you know that, then you know when someone is approaching your life in a relationship, you know what to you know what you will allow and what you don't allow. And you break it all down. You know, someone mm. can say, Well, I like I want to have kids. And that person on the first date says, I don't want kids. I never want to have kids. And then that person, you know, drops them off and says, well, you know, am I going to, is it going to be a second date? And you say yes, knowing you just want to be with someone. That's not, that's not self-care. Right. It's not self-care. Right. You have to, you have to be strong enough to say, I don't want to be rude, but what I want in life is not what you want in life. And I don't want to. I don't want to lead you on. So I'm gonna let this go today, and hope the best for you. Mm. So and, and and I know we don't. We're not in the game to hurt people, but we also in the game to be honest with ourselves. I'm gonna say that again. Mm. Be honest with ourselves. If you can't be honest with anybody else in the world, you be honest with yourself because you deal with you every day. Okay. So that's what I want to drop to you. Mm, Be honest. Abbott, I had to drop that bomb before you said be honest with yourself the second time, man. <laughs> I mean, you know, <laughs> listen, it's so true, man. It's not rocket science. You know, some people just get in and um, they, they end up with someone that's not compatible with them, knowing that it was displayed to them at the very get-go. Um, I'm coming to my sister, Nicole. What are your thoughts on this particular topic? Well, you know, I love clarity. So first, let's clear up one common misconception. Self-care is not the same as self-indulgence or being self-centered. Self-care simply means taking care of yourself daily so that you can be healthy, you can be well, you could do your job and be able to help care for others and so on. So many times we get lost in the busyness of the day. I'm completely guilty of this. And we put everything and everyone before ourselves and we don't even realize we're doing it. It's just like a natural flow of things. Uh, it's like you're driving a car on a flat tire. Will your car roll forward in a forward motion? Sure, but how far can you go? How many other people can you help when you're not at your full capacity? Before we can even think about loving someone else or being in a relationship, we have to make sure that we have a whole person to give mentally, emotionally, and physically. And back to the car analogy, would you buy a, a brand new car and drive it off the lot with a flat tire? Probably not. I would hope not. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Triple A can't help you with that, man. I think you only get like five calls. You, know, you for mess that up your time. rims and everything. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, the whole self-care aspect, um, you know, to my brothers and sisters out there, if you want to get the relationship you desire, then start by taking care of yourself today. You know, start working on your, your well-being, your your spiritual presence, your, your moral codes, your core values, your personal relationship principles, your emotional temperature, which will help you to navigate conflicts, your rules of engagement. In other words, what will you tolerate and what will you not tolerate? That's the more stated. Try to start establishing a drama-free life because the reality is, this will lead you on the road to happiness. Um, you know, the truth is without self-care, you more than likely will choose a partner from a place of brokenness, but by changing your belief system based on how you treat yourself more, better, then likely you will choose a partner from a place of wholeness because the goal of loving yourself before you love someone else is to find someone to share your completeness with, not to look for someone to complete you, all right? Mm. So now we're going to go ahead and pivot to our next topic and the next topic at hand. Well, before I do that, I'm going to bring some of our Facebook. Oh, man, you have to bring some, you know, I'm sorry my people's left you out, but he's going to first comment. So this is actually a really good friend of mine. My name okay. twin, Nicole Marie Denver in, from Colorado says, amen. She owns Milk and Vivid, you guys, here in Littleton, Colorado, and spray tans, teeth whitening, teeth gems, all of that. All right. Sorry. I had to give the plug. Yeah. It's all good. <laughs> Maria <laughs> Solomon says, I agree. Okay, whatever. Stated. 
All right, another comment from my sister Maria. And Maria says, yes, because if I lie to myself, then that opens the door for anyone to speak unhealthy conversations to me that's, that's considered as a lie. Mm. Yes, transparency is so important. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue to the next subtopic. And the next subtopic at hand is self-respect. Man, I cannot tell you how important this is if you uh, truly wanna work on yourself, right? So I'm gonna key this up. So the thing is, um, <laughs> you know, I believe in the laws of physics. I believe that it's real. And you have to be aware that if you don't respect yourself, then more than likely you will attract people who don't have any respect for you. Mm -hmm. Listen, no matter how much you fantasize or wish people to stop being judgmental or treat or people treating you in a certain way, you must, re you must realize that the world is going to treat you based on the reality of your actions and how you carry yourself. So I'm coming to my brother Lamar. What are your thoughts on this topic? It's important. And we have to have respect for ourselves. We have to respect about we only get this one time. We only get this, you know, there's no mm. second or there's no comma. There's a period with self self respect. And if we don't respect ourselves, how is someone else going to respect us? And I know personally, I've learned that in my marriage where I was young, just got married, and I felt like you know, buying a house and I felt like I could say anything to my wife. Not disrespectful, but just felt like I could say anything. I'm the man of the house, I'm the man. And my wife had to sit me down and say, listen, I have respect for me as a woman. I can't allow you to disrespect me, especially disrespect me as your wife or as your girl. With, you know. So I had to learn that in a way of, What's some things that I can respect about myself? The way I carry myself, and, you know, certain things that I say, certain things that I do, you know, is that respectful? It, what am I portraying out there to the world to come back as when they see me? And that's what you're doing now. Yes, it's, it's funny, it's cute. But what is the message you're giving to your spouse? You're giving to your family? You give it to your friends, you give it to social media. What are you giving? You know, the energy, like you said, Mel, the energy you're giving out is going to come back. So we have to start thinking, hey, listen, what I, what I put out there, I want it 10 times better than what I gave. Mm -hmm. You know, when you got something good, you don't play around with it. You mm -hmm. take that good, you turn it to great. And so you take that energy that you have now moving forward and you say, no, I want, if I'm at one, I need to be at 10 when it comes back. So focus that on what you give out to the world from this point on. Mm. I'm gonna burn out the studio today, man. I just wanna put it out there that, listen, we are all walking billboards, you know what I'm saying? Like that is so yes. important. If you see yourself as a walking billboard, then that will give you the, that analogy on how you should carry yourself out there in the world. I'm coming to my sister Angela. What are your thoughts on this topic? Oh, you muted. Yeah, sorry, had a trouble <laughs> finding the mute button. So yes, <laughs> yes, uh, we we are our own public relations rep. So we have the responsibility, the privilege and the power to put our image out there, to craft our image and put it out there. Make a good name for yourself is how I would summarize self-respect. Whether it's your credit, whether it's your work ethic, your discipline, put that out there. You know, clean up your act. If we're talking about loving yourself before you love someone else, clean up your act first. I'll never forget years ago, this guy, I, I don't even really know him, but we're just like, I follow him on Instagram. When he got married, he had to literally put a post telling folks, I'm married now, leave me alone. Listen, <laughs> brother, he should have cleaned it up before. If I was his wife, I'd be like, really? Like, how many phone calls from various women do I have to, you know, funnel through before you put out a disclaimer to the world? No, take yourself off the market literally before all that. So whatever you got to do, you know, you got to sell your wild oats, fine. Clean up your act. Don't have any loose ends okay. as far as self-respect, especially before you get into a relationship. You don't want people to treat you a certain way. Don't be that way. 
Simple mm. as that. Mm. I'm not talking about prejudice or discrimination, but if why y'all always talk about me not having a job? Because you don't have a you job, have a job. Rookie, so <laughs> you know, the fact is <laughs> make it a good name for yourself. And, and then that the person's gonna want to tie to and you're you know, I think it previously I'm already honoring my future husband by having a, a name for myself previously. He gets attached to a good name, and I'll get attached to a good name, and we just go further. Mm -hmm. But the self-respect starts now. Oh. Here. Jules, my people, Jules, Jules. Oh Jules. my goodness. <laughs> I'm coming to my sister Nicole. What are your thoughts on this topic? Don't come to me now. They said it all. <laughs> Y'all are killing it. My goodness. <clears throat> okay, so um self-respect is really what all of our subtopics are about today. It's what all of our subtopics are built on. When you respect yourself, you're able to recognize when you're overwhelmed and you can give yourself that me time guilt free. When you respect yourself, it's less difficult to forgive yourself for the mistakes you've made because you know your own character and values. You can be accountable and uh, as you already know yourself and you hold your, yourself to a higher standard. When you respect yourself, you are able to set clear and reasonable boundaries and stand by them at all costs. And lastly, when you respect yourself, like Angela said earlier, you are showing people how to treat you. Carrying yourself with your head held high, regardless of your current situation, makes people sit up and take notice. Like the whole panel said, a walking billboard. This behavior is not only great for you, but it also inspires the people around you to do and be better. Uh. Very well said, my sister. I'm just going to piggyback off when Nicole stated. Well, you know, from a man's perspective, the reality is, you know, um, I'm going to have to just be raw. Some sisters out there have that full-fledged ratchet or broken mindset, and they truly believe they're classy, which leads to certain men who approach or treat them low to a degree. And the sad truth is these particular women will go through life not having the slightest clue as to why their relationship is not how it's supposed to turn out to be. The same for my brothers out there who have that similar mindset. Um, the truth is you will come across women who have little to no respect for you if you don't stand up for yourself or if you're indecisive and afraid to take actions or risks to, to improve yourself to become a better man. Because truthfully, listen, the sister cannot naturally submit to you if you're afraid to make decisions. Mm. Um, in fact, she'll get very frustrated and will lose respect for you. And this is why self-respect is so important because... You know, I feel like respect within itself is the cornerstone to establish a healthy relationship. And I don't mean to get like all um, bringing back my school knowledge on this, but this is even presented by Sir Isaac Newton. You know, um, the brother that did his laws of motions stated that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So to my sisters out there, this simply means if you carry yourself with respect, the certain brothers will treat you with respect. But if you carry yourself as a cheap thrill, the certain brothers will treat you as a cheap thrill. And for my brothers out there, if you can't lead yourself or you carry yourself with low to no integrity, then, you know, sister going to just treat you like a doormat. Certain sisters is going to walk all over you because you don't respect yourself and therefore they can't respect you as a man. Hmm. So before we dive into our personal relationship and so before you dive into a personal relationship, just make sure, as the panel stated, respect yourself and others will respect you. All right. So Fire. I'm going to go ahead. Oh. All right. So before we go to that commercial break, let's go a couple of more comments. Here we go. So my girl, Nicole Marie Denver, again, a milk and vivid says, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, and the next one. Maria. Uh, Maria Solomon says, absolutely, 100. Ah, oh, love it there. So, you know, thank you for, for all the watching the show. And listen, when we come back, we have a segment called The Exchange. So this is where you can call in live. You can ask questions, leave a comment. And um, today's show, like I stated, we are talking about how to love, how to love yourself before you love someone else. This is DVDS. We'll be right back. Sit tight.
Are you single? Do you know about dbdsingles.com? Are you ready to meet a quality man or classy woman? The DBDS brothers want you to know that love and loyalty still exist. So if you're ready to meet relationship-ready people, sign up today at dbdsingles.com. Let's make love and loyalty dope again. If you would like to learn how to establish and maintain long-term meaningful relationships, join DBDS University today. You will learn about interpersonal relationships, first date tips, the relationship zones, emotional intelligence, and more. I want to say thank you to my big brothers, Mel and Mo, uh, for creating the DBDS University with the live, the book, the website. Um, it's helped me so much grow as an individual. Never go broke, never on my grind. She make it clap like I'm Busta Rhymes. I got the juice, the sauce, and all them things. I blam the twice a night with all my bling. Big Benz, I drive, I brought that thing. Any girl you want, they want my thing. Hey, welcome back to DBDS Live. Thank you. We have my, my sister Angela, my brother Lamar, and my DBDS sister Nicole. And listen, we've been dropping nuggets and knowledge. Fire. And today's show is titled, How? Oh, I love that. Guy. And listen, we've been just dropping some knowledge. And uh, today's show is titled, How to Love Yourself Before You Love Someone Else. And listen, before we dive into our next topics, we're going to hit up Facebook to see if there's any comments and some shout outs. So I want to give a shout out to Anthony, my sister D Doris, uh, Shantavia, Anthony Lockett, Marie, Ricky Hicks, Garita, L.A. Taylor, T. Taylor, Alicia Stewart, Joyce Lopez, Vince Milton, my brother Ronald Christie, Toya, George, Lisa, Erica, Miss Lynn, Jeff Roderick, Felicia, Tony, Shantae, my brother Gotham from Bangalore, India, on the hey. other side. We're watching the show. <laughs> so um, I want to give a shout out to everyone. And um, also at this point, I mean, you can definitely uh, call in. And I'm going to put that number right here on the board. If you want to call in the exchange, that is 860-365-9710. That is 860-365-9710. If you want to just drop a comment, say what's up. You know, it doesn't matter. The phone lines are open. So we're going to just continue to, to keep this show rolling. And the next subtopic that we're going to touch base on is, and I think this is also important, set mm. standards. Man, I cannot tell you how important this is when it comes to looking for that, that relationship, right? So I'm going to go ahead and key this up real quick. So when it comes to set standards, right? Um, I believe it's important to set your bar for love and not live beneath someone else's perception of standards because it's important to remain optimistic that love, respect, and loyalty still exists. Because if you don't have standards, then it puts you at a disadvantage to come across the wrong partner who can affect you in a negative light. Mm. So I'm coming to my sister, Angela. What are your thoughts on this particular topic? Yeah, so setting standards are so important. When people are desperate, lonely, or broken, they just want anybody. And that's what they end up with, just anybody. So part of all that we're talking about today, being healthy and whole, you begin to set some standards. And so you have to be clear. And rather, I say you get the privilege to be very clear on who it is that you are and what it is that you want, right? And then you can, whoever doesn't fit that mold respectfully doesn't fit your life. Lamar used my example earlier, like the exact example of a smoker, <laughs> <laughs> like the exact. So if you, I'm like, you looking at my notes, but <laughs> <laughs> if you don't want a smoker at all, if that's one of your deal breakers, don't date a smoker. Don't date a smoker and then be like, 
You think you're going to change? I bought you some nicotine patches or some nickel <laughs> let gum. No, this is a smoker. And it's a very hard <laughs> habit to change. So that person just doesn't fit that realm. Like, you know, I'm, I'm a Christian and I had some dating experience after my last relationship where I wasn't so strict with the Christianity thing. But now I am. I, I've dated what's out there. And I realized at the end of the day, my core values, we have to be on the same page as far as our faith. And so and so if someone is like, I worship Satan, he's a no-no to me. It's clear. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> that, you know, when you have when you have standards, it just makes it easier. <laughs> ah, so so very true. And I'm just gonna listen, before I even come to my brother Lamar. You know, we even have a comment about me dropping these bombs. You know, Miss Nicole Marie says, "Just keep dropping them bombs." That's right. <laughs> Our guests are are fire today. Um, I'm coming to my <laughs> to my brother Lamar. Uh, what are your thoughts on this topic as far as set standards? You got to set standards. If mm -hmm. any healthy relationship has to have a foundation. If you want to build a house with just wood and no foundation, you better hope it never earthquakes. <laughs> so <laughs> you better hope. <laughs> because what's the goal? What, 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 what is the goal for us to texting, uh, 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 calling, uh, social media, hanging out? What, what is the goal? What are we trying to accomplish here? You, 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 what do you want and what do I want? And let's see where that lays. If we can set standards if from day one, the problem is, is that we want to set standards after intercourse has taken place. Mm. Uh, I'll mm. let that sink in a little. That's we so find it where we set standards. Okay, let's get a little deep. We mm -hmm. set standards when we're in a argument. And then we want to put rules on it. But if you can put the rules beforehand and that that takes that argument, because what happens is we're in an argument and what we do is we start to add what we want in the relationship, in the argument. That has nothing to do with the argument. But we want to set that inside. But if we say, you know something? I'm at this age in my life. I have dated outside relationships. I have dated and I realized, you know something? I need to try something new. It don't work. I want to be married. I want to have a missus. I want to be a mister. I want to. Ha I want my last name to change. I want to put both our names on the map. I have to make some changes. And in order for me to do that, I have to tell this from day one. Not two, not three, not a year. One, you tell them from day one, this is what I want. If I cannot get this, it makes no point of us even conversating because we're trying to create something that's never going to fall or it's going to fall when it's too late. Mm -hmm. So my advice, and I know what I'm about to say, people may say, I'm done with you, Mel. Nicole, don't ever talk to me. <laughs> my advice <laughs> I want to help somebody. I want to free someone up right now. You should not intercourse with no one before 90 days. You should not be privately with someone within 90 days. Give yourself 90 days to know someone. Take that relationship. And after 90 days, after you have known someone publicly, that when we hang out, it's public. We're not calling each other babe. We're not calling each other baby. We're not... Sequel, we're not doing everything is public. After 90 days, if that person is still around, if that person still feels the same way after 90 days, you have laid out your foundation mm. for that relationship to take its next step. Give yourself 90 days. 90 days. 90 days. If you if your job, <laughs> when your job says you have 90 day probation, give your relationship 90 days. Let me stop. I'm going to stop now because I, I, I'm going to hurt some of my feelings. Let me stop. You <laughs> give, give, if, your, if your job is telling you you have 90 days or you're going to get fired if you don't meet these requirements, we don't need you. 
So why are you not doing that with your relationship? Why are you not doing that with yourself? Mm. Because if your mm. job came to you today, tomorrow, on Monday, say you're not performing the way we want you, and we need that, we need that actual hundred percent of these. I promise you, once you leave the office, you own it. So why are you not doing that with yourself? Right. Let me mm. not, let me stop. Let me stop. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want nobody <laughs> kill me. <laughs> <laughs> I I might I might have to call security after this. <laughs> <laughs> Very well said. Um, I'm coming to my sister Angela. Something else you may want to add, my sister? Yes, everything Lamar <laughs> said. So I look to you, if you look at any organization, longstanding, whether it's a bank, a school, a church, they have a lot of standards. And we get into relationships that not just affect our lives, but literally generations after us. And we do it willy nilly. So if we can take a key from what employers do, what banks do. They will run your credit. If you are not qualified, they have no, prob no problem telling you no. They have a standard. Every job has a qualification. I can't go apply to be a surgeon and ain't been to medical school in the first. They will say you don't qualify and there's no hmm. hard feeling. So we have to get like that with our relationships because it's not just me and old boy. It's me, old boy, our kids, our grandkids, our fifth generation. Hmm. If we start to think of that legacy and that kind of generational stuff, it would really help with some of these standards. It's like, you cute, you boo, you cute, but you don't meet <laughs> this. And so we will be... <laughs> it would be a lot easier, I believe, if we took it as serious as we took our money, for example. <laughs> Period. Oh, man. Yeah, I mean, I kind of um, parallel with that because um, we do have three zones, the friend zone, the intimacy zone, and the physical zone. And within the first zone I talked about in my book is the whole fact that the friend zone, I tell my sisters and brothers out there, do not have sex at all. At all. You know, take your time to get to know that person, because if you put that dessert before the entree, more than likely it's going to come out as a male nourish diet, you know. Mm -hmm. So I'm coming to my sister, Nicole. What are your thoughts on the topic set in standards? I wanted to give a quick shout out to my niece, Taniqua Briscoe, who's watching. Hey, niece. Um, so you guys call it setting standards, setting boundaries. Same thing, right? Mm -hmm. So in the famous words of Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five, Oh, don't push me because I'm close to the edge. I'm trying not to lose my head. Classic song, uh, right? Uh, uh, uh. We didn't even realize that this was an exact example of setting boundaries. Let, let's break it down. The simple lyrics cover four steps of setting healthy boundaries. Identify your needs, which is don't push me. Uh, identifying or excuse me, defining your boundaries because I'm close to the edge. Huh. Make your boundary known, because I'm trying not to lose my head. And then you have to enforce your boundaries, which I guess is. <laughs> <laughs> so just some old school knowledge right there. <laughs> See my people, you, you will not find another show where someone could take Grandmaster Flash lyrics and turn it into a philosophy. It's what we do. Oh, <laughs> man, that's a double bummer. Fire. So, you know, my whole thing is in order to set standards, you must you must practice self-love, which is the most important element to guide you with choosing the right partner. Um, because the reality is you can't love yourself then you can't love nobody else. And uh, and I believe that self-love is the dominant component, which creates boundaries, as Nicole stated, which sets standards, which conditions your mind on what you are looking for. So you won't settle. Um, in fact, in Dear Brothers, Dear Sisters, Listen Up, the concept known as um, the rules of engagement, that's mm -hmm. like the individual set in personal expectations as to what they're going to get out of their relationship. And then you have your more codes, which is your, you know, your personal relationship principles that an individual establish and follows with looking for a suitable partner for a long term or lifetime commitment. So when you apply these concepts, you won't lower your standards or become desperate to find someone to fix you or use your body or vessel as a down payment to get someone to commit to you. Um, you know, you'll be whole because when you set standards, it, it may take longer to get the relationship you desire, but once it happens, trust me, you may experience more lasting results. Mm. All right, you know? So before we go, I, we do have a comment before we hit up one last commercial break. Very long comment, by the way. <laughs> oh. 
Facebook user says, Angela is absolutely right. Set standards before we get married. The same priorities we have for money should be the same for marriage. The same questions and item courts require for divorce are the same we should have before marriage. Set standards. Can I get the fire on that comment? Oh, absolutely. Let me get dropped the bomb on that one. Man, Ooh. very well said. So we're going to go ahead and take one last commercial break. Um, obviously, um, we're almost out of time. So on this last commercial break, when we come back, that's right. It's our Jerry Springer moment. This is where we get to uh, summarize the show. And we're going to take it from there. So sit tight. This is DBDS Live. We'll be right back. <laughs> So many people are calling for police reform. And so because they're calling for police reform, they may not understand that there are many organizations who are already responding. And I feel like you have to really get to know people, see if they say, share the same core values of you as you before you get involved with them. I want to ask a question as to how we got to this place right here where mask wearing, uh, where COVID-19, where public health is all politicized. I, I really want you all to think about this. How do we get to this particular point? It's really a nice balance when femininity and masculinity can mix together and just create this awesome, mm -hmm. you know, um, yes. Yes. Um, experience. Hey, welcome back. And I'm here with my sister, Angela, my brother, Lamar, and my EPD assistant, Nicole. Now listen, it's been nothing but golden nuggets. So if you missed this episode, don't worry. Our show will be on heavy rotation throughout the week and also it's available on YouTube, which is our DPDS live channel. So now, yes, it's about that time to share our final thoughts on today's show. That's right, the Jerry Springer moment. <laughs> and I'm coming, I'm coming to my sister, Angela. Uh, give people who's watching your final thoughts. Final thoughts, 30 seconds. I just want to encourage you all to count your blessings. We're all in different seasons. If you're single and looking for that boo, enjoy your single season. You married, go in there and love that spouse. Love on them. Throw away those arguments and those things that are so petty and just love on them. Love on your children. If you're waiting to have kids, speak to your womb and say, one day I'm going to be the best mom or going to be the best dad to you. Wherever you are in life, go ahead and count your blessings because today is such a gift. And I pray that we all realize it and enjoy it and even give it away. Mm. Wow. wow. Nicely said, my sister. Nicely said. Mm. Now I'm coming to my brother, Lamar. Uh, what are your final thoughts for today's show? My final thoughts, my message for everybody out there is to wake up every morning and just be blessed that you're able to do it again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you had a bad night. You, ha you never have a bad day. You always have bad moments. Always realize that you have bad moments, you will never have a bad day. There's no, no one on this earth can say from the time they woke up to the time they went to bed, everything was bad. You just had bad moments. And you brush that off and you put your feet on the floor and you keep pushing. Mm -hmm. and the, and as long as you know that if you can't find happiness, create it. Mm. Create your happiness. Mm. Sometimes it has to start with you, and then your happiness will gravitate and it will uh, allow other people to gravitate to you. So today, I hope that you take everything that we have brought to you and apply it because I love you and I believe in you. That's, that's the best thing I can tell you from this point on for 2021. Mm. Man, Excellent. very powerful and very well said. Thank you, my brother. And now I'm coming to my DVD assistant, Nicole. Um, what are your final thoughts for today's show? Our first show of 2021. I know, right? It was such a dope show. 
Before giving my closing thoughts, I just wanted to thank the incredible Angela and Lamar for sharing their life experience and wisdom with us. Please make sure you guys follow them. Uh, if you look at the bottom of their screen, you can find them on Facebook. I'm not sure if you guys have Instagram, if you want to drop that real quick for the people so they can follow you. I am Lamar Wilson. Angela, are you on Instagram at all? I am on Instagram. I am lovely Angie with two N's. So if you want to follow me on Instagram, it's lovely Angie with two N's. Excellent. And make sure you pick up her book. Mel, can you show it again? Oh, damn. Let me tell you what I know, because who knows stuff better than you know yourself? So make sure you pick that up. So anyway, to all of my DBDS brothers and sisters, my Angelou once says, my mission in life is not merely to survive, but to thrive and do so with some passion, some compassion, some humor and style. It all starts with loving yourself and being your own biggest cheerleader. So when the mm. right person comes into your life, you will come together as two complete individuals and move mountains. With that being said, always love yourself first and the right one will find you. Mm. Very well said. And um, and I'm gonna piggyback off you, Nicole. I just wanna thank this amazing panel, Amar, uh, the beautiful Angela. Thank you so much for sharing your wisdom, your experience, your knowledge. We appreciate you both for coming onto the show. So I'm just going to just finish off and state here that, um, you know, going for instant gratification really provides great long term or lifetime results. And this is why you have to take time to build upon yourself before you build a foundation with a potential partner. You have to start first with loving yourself. So that way you won't be viewed as a potential project, but as a potential partner to establish a healthy relationship. Mm. So once again, I want to thank this amazing panel. And much love to the DVDS family. Right. Yo, Mel Money, send us off. <laughs> <clears throat> Bye, everybody. <laughs>